I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today, because this is another video in my Black Box 101 series, where I teach you to tune and troubleshoot your quadcopter using Black Box. Today, we're going to look at the pendulum rocket fallacy. Uh, we're going to revisit that topic, and we're going to explore whether having your CG high or low, how that affects your quadcopter's handling. Stay tuned. In a previous video, I talked about the pendulum rocket fallacy. Now, the pendulum rocket fallacy is definitely a thing, but it applies to rockets, and I posited that it also applied to quadcopters. Now, the pendulum rocket fallacy, I'll let you research that topic if you want to. It's actually pretty confusing, and I got myself a little bit confused when I made the video, and that's why the video is not up anymore. The gist of the pendulum rocket fallacy, if it were to apply to quadcopters, would be that the CG being high or low would not affect whether the copter tended to fall into or fall out of a turn. In other words, people talk about quadcopters with a low CG having a kind of a pendulum effect where the quadcopter wants to level out, and people talk about quadcopters with a high CG having a kind of a tendency to fall into the turn. Well, I rather than think about that analytically, which I failed utterly at <laughs> earlier, I'm going to think about it experimentally because we know that the I term moves to oppose persistent bias. So if the quadcopter had a tendency to fall into a turn or, or, or level out of a turn, we would see the I term fighting that tendency when we actually move the quadcopter. So let's just fly the quadcopter and see what the I term does and learn about the forces acting on the quadcopter. I've got the files loaded up here in Black Box Explorer, and uh, I'm looking at the gyro and the I term for the roll axis only. And the reason for that is that if you watch me play it forward, you'll see I take off. Uh, it takes me a minute to find my hover point. I've got two batteries on top of the copter, so it's got a high CG, and then I'm going to just roll to the left and nothing else. And I'm going to see what the I term does. Uh, and I'm only rolling to the left. I'm not flying more aggressively because I want to keep things as, as simple as possible and just extract information about just that one factor. I don't want anything else muddying the waters. So I'm going to do that with the batteries on top with the CG high and with the batteries on bottom with the CG low and see what, how the eye turn behavior differs. Here is the biggest of the moves I did where I had the steepest uh, angle. And if we look here, we can see with a high CG, as I begin to roll to the side, the eye term moves in the same direction as the move. So I'm rolling to the right, which we can tell from the stick. The gyro goes positive, indicating that I'm rolling to the right. And the eye term goes positive, indicating that the copter is not moving fast enough. And the eye term feels that it needs to move faster. Now, what the eye term does during the actual gyro movement, I think, is not so important. Uh, it's not so interesting. Well, maybe it's interesting, but it's not what we're focused on here. What it's saying is that the copter isn't moving as fast as it should, and, and so fine. But what we really are interested in is what happens here. Now the gyro has settled to zero. And if I watch in slow speed as the copter holds attitude and, ro and translates to the side, I'll go a little faster than that. we can see that the I term is essentially zero during this move and is only when I begin to push the stick to the left that the I term then begins to become non-zero. And the I term goes positive again, which is very interesting. So here the copter is, well, it's rolling to the left, but it's also leveling out, and the I term goes positive, meaning that this time, because the I term is opposing the gyro, they're on opposite sides of the line, it, the I term is slowing the move down. What this is telling us is that the copter, the copter has a tendency, it seems like it's telling us that the copter has a tendency to want to be level, because when we... When we rolled to the right and became non-level, the I term pushed us into the move and said, accelerate, go faster. When we were holding the move, see here we're just holding the move, the stick is centered. 
the I term was zeroed, meaning that the copter was, there was no external force acting on the copter. The copter had no tendency to fall into or level out of the move. As I begin to push the stick left to level out, again, the I term says, it says slow down this time, uh, which means that the copter wanted to level out faster than it was being commanded to do, and the I term wanted to slow it down. So that is really fascinating. Let's look at a few of the other examples uh, to see if they are consistent with that. Here we take off and we're hovering and... There's a move. So here we roll to the left. And we can see that as the gyro moves to the left, the I term also goes negative, moves to the left. So uh, the gyro, when we enter the move, when we go, when we leave level attitude, the I term accelerates the move. And when we level back out again, what do we see? When we level back out again, the I term opposes the move. So it seems like the copter is having a tendency to want to remain level, but what do we see in the middle of the move? Here, the I term is negative. And negative is roll left. So the I term is negative here, indicating the copter wants, again, it's wanting to level out, and the I term is opposing that. How about that? We got another one? There's another one, same behavior. Yeah, yeah, the I term is almost zero here, but again, as we translate to the side, the I term goes negative. Again, same thing, it's fighting a tendency to want to level back out again. And, but here, as we level back out again, we see the I term remain negative. It does not, we do not see that tendency uh, yeah. No, no, that's the same. That's the same. It's the same. Now, well, let's take a look. That's really exciting and counterintuitive. Uh, I even don't know what to make of that. But let's take a look at the low CG example and see what we get with that. So now we've got the low CG and let's find our first little bump to the side. There it is. With low CG, the I term mostly remains zeroed. We see, we see the I term a little bit accelerate us into the move. The I term is moving the same direction as the gyro. It goes just a little bit negative. And then as we hold the move, we hold that side attitude. The I term goes negative again. As we level out again, yeah, it goes to zero. Now the other direction, same thing. We're kind of seeing the same thing. We're seeing the exact same thing as before. The I term is doing the exact same thing with the low CG as it was with the high CG. See, as we enter the move, the I term pushes to accelerate meaning the copter did not want to roll to the left fast enough. As we're in the move, it is, the I term is opposing it, it is, put, it is counteracting a tendency to roll back out of the move. And as we level out again, well, we continue to see that same thing. Well, I think we can say with some confidence that the behavior did not change between the high CG and the low CG, having two batteries on top of the copter versus batteries on the bottom of the copter which is, I don't know what to make of that. We did see that the I term was non-zero when the copter was angled over, was banked over and not in a flat hover. But the way that it behaved made it seem like the copter had a tendency to want to level back out again, which is, I'm, I'm not, I would have expected to see the I term accelerate the move going into the move and accelerate the move coming out of the move. Instead, it accelerated the move going into the move and it decelerated the move uh, coming out, which suggests the copter wants to be level, and I just don't understand how that 
really could be true. But uh, that's what the data is telling us. It's up to us to figure out <laughs> what, wh why the data is the way that it is. I hope this video has given you some insight into how we can we can use black box to learn about the, the forces acting on the copter. And the eye term is specifically useful for this because it responds to persistent bias. So when we're when we're wondering, you know, is the copter wanting to roll into the move or roll out of the move, the eye term is definitely the way to go. There's a lot more experimentation that we could do because we really haven't answered fully this question. For example, when I'm in a turn, when, when, I'm in, when I do what I do, where I just roll to the side and let the copter roll to the side, there's not really any acceleration happening there. Gravity's pulling on the copter, but other than that, there's no acceleration acting on it like laterally. Whereas when I'm going through a turn, there's centrifugal force pulling the copter outwards. And it's certainly possible as we accelerate through the turn that things that are heavier would be pulled to the outside more than things that are lighter. Uh, that's something that would require a little bit more aggressive flying and it would be a little harder to pick out, uh, which is why I tried to make this a reasonably clean example. But even this clean example gave us an interesting and, and non-intuitive result uh, and there's certainly, certainly room for more exploration here. But that's all we're going to do for now. Thanks for watching and happy flying.